Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to show you some more CSS experiments. Now, in this first one, what we're going to do is we're going to create a navigation menu that slides over our content coming in from the left side of the screen, sort of like what you'd see on a mobile navigation. And in the next video after that, we're actually going to take it a little bit further, and we're going to make it that same style that you're used to seeing in Android phones, where you click the menu and navigation and things push over. So after these next two videos, you should have a good understanding about how to build a navigation that's suitable for a mobile device that's maybe out of the way and then you can click uh, a menu toggle and slide it open. So keep watching, we're gonna show you that now. Okay, so what we're starting with is just a really basic site here. And now I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of what we have in the CSS and the HTML so you know what we're working with. So what we have is just a basic header tag. Inside of that, we have a navigation, which just contains an unordered list with uh, four items, home, about us, clients, contact us. Um, there's some classes here, which we'll talk about later uh, once those become important. However, some of this stuff like site title is just used to uh, style off of. Now we're also using font awesome to use this little hamburger style menu. And if you scroll down here, you'll see that we have a main tag and inside of our main, we just have an H2 and a couple of paragraphs. So that's really just it. So now what we wanna do is we wanna leave this navigation where it is because it makes sense semantically to have the main navigation underneath uh, the page title right in here in the header because if we're doing the site responsive This is where we want the navigation to be on uh, the desktop view But let's say for the mobile view We want this tucked away and we want it to slide in from the right which is what we're going to be doing here So even though I'm showing you a full-size desktop width you can sort of imagine what this would be like on mobile because We have this little hamburger style you click it it slides over it might be something very much what you'd be used to with a mobile site layout Okay, so here is our HTML not nothing too complex here you can imitate this just with a header with the navigation inside as well as just a main with some body text now next we have our css if we check this out it's really just some basic css uh, i just gave a background some color some padding to the header site title some size uh, the nav toggle, which is just this hamburger menu, I gave it a cursor pointer, so when you hover over it, you get the little pointer. And it's positioned absolutely uh, to the top left corner here. Now I'm just saying all links be white. Of course, you're probably not gonna wanna say all links in your entire site be white, but for this example, it doesn't much matter. And we have, uh, more importantly, we have our nav here that is just basically has a list style of none. It has no margin, no padding. The links inside of this main navigation, however, are display block, and uh, they have some padding here of 10 and 20 pixels, and that's just to give it a nice good click area. Like I said, if we're gonna be doing this on mobile, you're gonna want your users to have a larger click area, so when they touch it with their finger, it's more likely to uh, actually click the link. Cool, so let's get into it. What we actually wanna do is we first wanna take this main navigation and position it on top of all of our content and what you would uh, consider its final resting place once it's open, right? So we wanna, start at the, the ending stage with the navigation open and then work backwards. That way we can make sure it's all looking perfectly, and then sort of push it out the way and then we'll treat the navigation to trigger and open. So for our main navigation class, this is going to be uh, hitting the main navigation, which is the nav tag we have here. The nav tag just has a class of main navigation. You can uh, ignore this role navigation in fact, just to get it out of the way, I'll just delete it entirely. We're not using that in this example. Uh, now, if we come back to our CSS here, what we're gonna wanna do is first position this fixed. And positioning fixed, as you know or may not know, uh, positions it sort of absolutely to the window, not to any sort of parent. So we can say uh, position fixed. And we want this to be top zero, left zero, so therefore it's in the top left corner, and we want this to take up 100% width and height. We also want this to take up 100% height because we want this to fill the screen. 
Now you'll notice because this doesn't have a background, it's sort of sitting on top of everything. So let's give this a background and we can give this just a background of 333, which is a little bit darker, but not uh, too dark. Actually, let's go 222 just to make it, there we go. Cool, and I also wanna give this some uh, text align center because on a mobile navigation, this might be a little bit nicer to, to see. Okay, if you consider this, um, it's probably gonna be looking something like this. Cool. Okay, so now we have this mobile navigation and it's covering our whole screen. So now, how do we push it out of the way? Well, you could change its position left or something like that, but we're gonna be using transform and then translate. So we're gonna say transform and then translate, and we're gonna use translate X. Now you could put a pixel value here and say translate 50 pixels, and that push it over 50 pixels. Uh, likewise, you could say negative 50 pixels, but since we're doing this in a, an environment where we don't know the widths of things, we're gonna use percentages, so we can say push this over negative 100% and it's no longer uh, visible on our screen. Uh, you can tell it's over there because if we set it to negative 50%, you can see it's sort of half on. Okay, so we have this transform translate X at negative 100%. That means it's pushed off directly to the left of our page. Now we're also gonna wanna add a transition onto this. So that way when we toggle the translate position, we're gonna get a nice smooth sliding in. So we can say trans, and then it's going to be, we're going to transition just the transform property. So we can say transform, and we're going to do that over 0. Uh, let's do 0. 0.6 uh, seconds, so it's six milliseconds, and we're going to tell it to ease. Okay, so we've now added a transform, and we've added a transition to that transform. Now, how do we get this to open? Now this is where we need a little bit of jQuery. And now you could do this with just normal JavaScript, but for this example, we're using jQuery. So what we can do, if you're not familiar with jQuery, uh, just to give you a little heads up on the syntax, what it's doing is it's wrapping this class of nav toggle in a dollar sign in parentheses. And what this means, it's basically saying, find on the page any nav toggle. And then we say, we're using the on method, so period on. Then in parentheses, the string click, comma, and then a function with no arguments. And we're going to have open curly brackets. Then next we have the dollar sign parentheses, and then we're using the main navigation. So what this is doing is it's selecting the main navigation on our page, and then we're using the toggle class method. So what this statement overall says is that when I click on the nav toggle, then add a class of open to main navigation if it has one if it does not have one already and if it has one already then remove it so it's toggling if this class exists or not so if we come back to our html you'll see that our main navigation does not have a class of open at all and likewise uh so if we click this toggle uh you won't see a change in our html here but if we were to inspect this you would see this changing and it would be toggling the class of open. So what we want to do now is add an open state to our CSS. Okay, so we have our main navigation here and we've just uh, made sure that we're toggling it to be open or closed. So what we can say is once the main navigation also has a class of open, then give this some overriding styles. And those styles are just going to be one line and that's just going to be transform. And then we're going to say translate X and we're going to say zero. So what we're telling this is, is we don't want it to translate anywhere. We want it to be in its normal position. So now if everything worked right, once we click this toggle, you'll see that we have our navigation flying in. 
and that was really smooth. It looked great, uh, and that's part into the ease. If we were to use linear here instead of ease, it might not have looked so smooth. You could even use like a Bezier uh, curve to make it even more interesting, but we're not gonna get into that yet. We can talk about that in a couple more videos. Okay, so we have our navigation here, but now it's stuck open. Well, since we already have this class of nav toggle that toggles the navigation, what can we do? Well, we can add a simple trigger into our navigation here just to make it so that it, we have the opportunity to close it. So we can just have an anchor here or even a span. So let's actually just have this as a span and it's just going to say close. Now this span is going to have a class of, as you may have guessed, it's going to have a class of nav toggle which is just going to trigger the same exact jQuery function that we have triggered with the hamburger menu. So let's save this. Now when we click our hamburger, it opens and we have this close that's sort of hanging out in the middle of things and we click that, it hides it. Let's make this close a little bit nicer. Um, so let's go back to our CSS and we wanna say that the nav toggle that's inside of the main navigation is going to, uh, because nav toggle already has a position of absolute, we're just going to say this is right of zero and top, or let's say right and top of like 5%. That way it's not all the way at the top, but it's, it's pretty close. Okay, so now when we click this, you can see that our close is right here and it closes and opens the slide and navigation. You can imagine if this was a mobile site, we have our site here. Uh, um, let's click this. There we go. We have our mobile navigation. It slides in really smooth. Now what's great about this approach is that if you don't want to this to slide in from the left, you want it to slide in from the right, all you have to do is say translate X 100% instead of negative 100%. And now we can click this and it's coming in from the right. And even better, if we wanted this to come in from the top or bottom, we could just turn this to translate Y. So now that we have translate Y 100%, we click it, it comes in from the bottom. And if you guessed it, if we have this negative 100%, when we click this, it's going to come in from the top. So now we have this navigation that's perfectly semantically in line with the rest of our HTML. However, in this mobile view, it's flying in from whichever way we want it to and we have complete control over it. And it looks super it looks super good, it's nice and smooth. I mean, actually the site doesn't look good. The animation looks good. The site is not going to be winning any design competitions here. Uh, it's, it's not so good looking, but that's quite all right. So check it out and play around with these translate values. Maybe play around with the transition itself, try different easing properties or different time functions and see exactly what kind of interesting things you can create. So cool, this is how you make a slide over navigation menu using CSS3. Now keep in mind with all of these CSS experiments, I'm not using any browser prefixes. So if you were doing this on your own, you're going to be wanting to make sure that all of your code is browser prefixed to be working on uh, the widest selection of browsers possible. And if possible, you could use something like auto prefixer or uh, compass or something to take care of the prefixing for you. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video below or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. You can always check out the Level Up Tuts.com and check out Level Up Pro, which is the subscription service for Level Up Tuts. So with Level Up Pro, you can download the videos. You can have code examples for the CSS experiments, and we're even going through and doing the back catalog to make sure those have code examples. There's a private forum. You get an ad-free experience on leveluptuts.com. There's even a two-hour SAS mastery course, which is similar to the SAS videos that I have on Level Up Tuts, but it was made special for the Tuts Plus market place which no longer exists. So now I'm able to bring that to you as part of the Level Up Pro package. So sign up for $8.99 a month or $95 a year and just check it out. Help support Level Up Tuts with Level Up Pro. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.